the brain Worthy of every breath we could ever breathe We live for you Jesus, the name above every other name Jesus, the only one who could ever say Oh. 
Good morning, church. Morning, everyone. Wonderful to see you all today. It is really good to be back in the house of the Lord. I hope you all feel rested and feel welcome this morning. Welcome to everyone who's joining online. Will you guys please stand and join us as we worship our amazing King, our wonderful God. Yeah, let's go. Open the eyes of the blind There's no one like you There's none like you Into the darkness you shine Out of the ashes we rise There's no one like you There's none like you And our God is greater Our God is stronger God, you are higher than any other. Our God is healer, awesome and power. Our God, our God. Water you turn into wine Open the eyes of the blind There's no one like you There's none like you Into the darkness you shine Out of the ashes we rise There's no one like you There's none like you Our God is greater, our God is stronger, God you are higher than any other, our God is healer, awesome and power, our God, our God. If our God is for us, then who could ever stop us? And if our God is with us, then what could stand against? And if our God is for us, then who could ever stop us? And if our God is with us, then what could stand against? What could stand If our God is for us, then who could ever stop us? And if our God is with us, then what could stand against? And if our God is for us, then who could ever stop us? And if our God is with us, then what could stand against? Then what could stand against? Our God is greater, and our God is stronger. God, you are higher than any other. Our God is healer, awesome in power. Our God, our God. Our God is greater, our God is stronger. God, you are higher than any other. Our God is healer, awesome in power. Our God, our God. said that it's really good to see you all this morning and I'm so, so glad to be here. But there's something that I want to remind us of. 
and that is that God is pleased to be here with us. His intentions towards us could not be any more clear. He sent his son to die so that we could be here right now with him. And if you're wondering or doubting, you can set that aside because if there is one place that you belong right now today, it is here with our God.
You give life, you are love, you bring light to the darkness, you give hope, you restore every heart that is broken. give life, you are love, you bring light to the darkness, you give hope, you restore every heart that is broken. your praise. Our hearts will cry, these bones will sing. Great are you, Lord. And only earth will shout your praise. Our hearts will cry, these bones will sing.
My heart. 
our God. Oh, see how great, how great is our God. How great is our God. Sing with me, how great is our God. Oh, see how great. you and we worship you. Today we gather here in your name because it is written where two, three gather in your name you are present and we believe in your presence we believe in your anointing in this place we trust in you Lord to lead us in this service in Jesus name Amen Amen church I greet you all in the name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Today is our first Sunday of the year. And uh, the Bible says in the book of Exodus 12, verse 1, Sometime later the Lord said to Moses and Aaron, This, is, this month is, is to be the first month of the year for you. It was probably in June 16 or 17, and the Lord woke them up. He said, no, this is January 1st. That means God is able to stop the time and reset it. So I invite you this morning to join us as we share the words that the Lord may stop whatever season of sickness you had and start a season of healing and restoration. Whatever it was the season of loss and destruction, may the Lord stop it and reset it with a season of harvest. Because this year is the year of the Lord. And we will rejoice in it in each and every day. But this is our assignment this morning. God has prepared the road. All he asks us to do is to follow his words. That's why we are here. We're going to share the words. I would like you to embrace this word and carry it through this week. Because we are not Christian on Sunday service. We are Christian from Monday to Saturday. Sunday, we come and worship him. I'd like you to prepare your heart. Let's pray together that the word that will be spoken today will be of something that will give you light to carry on in this first week of the assembly. Let's pray in Jesus' name. Father, as you release your word, we pray that you keep us in you, that you forge us, that you mold us so that we can be the people according to your heart desire. That the season that you started with us, we can actually, Father, get the fruit of it. Lead us, God, that we should follow you all the days of our life. In Jesus' name. Amen. I invite Pastor Kobus to share the word. Thank you so much. Thank you so much, Guben. Well, praise the Lord. Good morning, everyone. Wonderful to see you. Can I ask if we just open those side doors just to get a bit of a draft through the through the building? Thank you so much. Wow, I'm so um, I'm so excited about uh, 2022, and uh, I can't wait to see what the Lord will do in this season. Amen. Amen. And I just feel that we need to just to uh, just to do a uh, activation. And uh, so I wonder if just there where you seated, if you could just close your eyes just for a little bit, just for a while. And if you could just stretch out your hands in front of you, 
like this. And just know that we have the name of Jesus. We've been given the name of Jesus. And His name is the name above every other name. This name was given by which men can be saved. This name is given by which we can be healed and delivered. It is the name of Jesus. And no matter what we go through, no matter what we face, we have the name of Jesus. And I wonder if we can just sit there. I, want you to, I just want you to do something with me. I want you to declare prophetically. Declare the wonderful name of Jesus. Sing this with me. You're the name above all names. You are I sing it with me. You're the name. You're the name above all names. Yes, you are. You are worthy of all praise. And my heart will see how great is our God. Okay, let's declare over our lives the name of Jesus. Cause you're the name above all names So worthy, worthy of all things And my heart, and my heart will sing How great is our God Let's sing one more time Come on everybody join me You're the name Lord, we just declare that you are worthy, Jesus, you and you alone. And we declare today, Jesus, you are Lord. And we bow our knees before you now, and we confess that you are Lord to the glory of God the Father. And all of God's children said, Amen, Amen. Wonderful. Can we just appreciate uh, Daniel and Nate? Thanks, guys. Wonderful. Wow. And I can't wait for this year to get going and to see what the Lord will do. Amen. Isn't it wonderful to know that if God is for us, who can be against us? Amen. And I want, I want to tell you that God is on your side. God loves you. And He's on your side. And God is, God is fighting for you. And we can believe this because it is the truth. It is the Word of God. Amen. Amen. So, um, the title of my message that I want to share with you today is called, That's the Kingdom of God. Can, can we all say it together on three? One, two, three. That's the Kingdom of God. All right. Now, let's say it with a bit of 2022 oomph. All right. You ready? One, two, three. That's the Kingdom of God. You know, the Bible says that it was God's pleasure to give us His kingdom. It was God's pleasure to give us this kingdom. Now, would you follow me in your Bible to Romans chapter 14, verse 17 and 18? And we're going to do a bit of a reading just in this passage. Romans chapter 14. Verse 17 and 18, if you would follow me there, it's, it's always great to, to just read it for yourself. 
and, and it will be on the screen, but if you could just read it for yourself, I've got the NIV on the screen. <clears throat> Romans chapter 14, verse 17 and 18. I'm reading from the NIV. For the kingdom of God is not a matter of eating and drinking, but of righteousness, peace, and joy in the Holy Spirit. Because anyone who serves Christ in this way is pleasing to God and receives human approval. Now here's my first question, and I think it's so important that we get a grasp on this. If I say that's the kingdom of God, maybe you can ask the question, what is the kingdom of God? If I speak about the kingdom of God, what do I mean? If the Bible speaks and says, let your kingdom come, what does that mean? What is the kingdom of God? And we need to wrap our hearts around this. We need to get a grip on this. I believe with all of my heart that the kingdom of God is the reign and rule of Jesus Christ in the life of a believer. It's not just an out there philosophy, something to think about. It is a life fully surrendered to Jesus Christ. It is a life of no compromise. It is a life that says yes to Jesus and no to everything else. That's the kingdom of God. It is a life completely abandoned and sold out to everything and all that Jesus is. In Romans 14, just a few verses before this one, verse 11, this is what the Bible declares. It is written, As surely as I live, says the Lord, as surely as I live, says the Lord, every knee will bow before me. And if you don't have a knee, the Lord will give you a knee because every knee will bow before him, says the Lord. And every tongue will acknowledge God. Whether you know him or not, whether you believe in him or not, whether you have lived, whether you will live, <laughs> whether you are yet to be born, listen closely. There will be a day that every knee will bow before the Lord. He spoke it, and so shall it be. And every tongue will confess that He is God. Even the even the most hardened atheist, his eyes will be open to see the Lord. The question is, will you bow your knee today? Or will you bow your knee on the day when you see the Lord face to face and it's too late? Will you confess today and speak and say, Jesus is Lord, and believe it? Or will you wait until the sky opens up and Jesus comes back, and then it's too late? But one thing is sure, the Lord has spoken. Every knee will bow, every tongue will confess that He is God. 
and so shall it be. Amen? The choice is yours. You can bow your knee today. And you can accept the Lord Jesus Christ as God. And you can give your life to Him today. The choice is yours. You see, God is the King. And He's the King of His kingdom. And we belong to Him. Jesus prayed in Matthew 6, he says, let your will be done. Let heaven come. Let your will be done. Not my will. Let your will be done. God, what do you want to do? I surrender to your mission, God. <laughs> That's the kingdom of God. God's kingdom is a kingdom of righteousness, peace, peace. And joy in the Holy Spirit. Now, what does the word righteousness mean? Thank you for asking. When the Bible speaks of righteousness, to be righteous, what does it mean? God's kingdom is a kingdom of righteousness. In short terms, it means to be made right with God. It means that every person in this room have done something wrong. You see, no one is without sin. And I'm number one. No one can stand before the Lord and claim that he is without sin, that he's never done anything wrong. And because of your sin, because of our sin, in fact, there was a separation between us and God. But then Jesus came. For God so loved the world that he gave his one and only Son, Jesus Christ, and that whoever believes in Him shall not perish, but we will have everlasting life. Jesus made us right with God. Jesus redeemed us. And if you believe in Him, you will live forever. There's another way to translate this word righteousness. You can also use the word goodness or good. You see, God gave us Jesus because He is good, because of His goodness towards us. He gave Jesus to us. And because of Jesus... We can be good. We can demonstrate God's goodness to the world because of what Jesus did in our hearts and in our lives. I'm telling you, and you can believe this, there's not a lot of goodness in me. If I had to white knuckle my way to heaven, I wouldn't make it. But the Lord has worked in me through the power of the Holy Spirit. And has changed me. And so I can demonstrate the goodness of God. I can live out this righteousness that He's given me. You see? It's a kingdom of righteousness. It's a kingdom of goodness. It's a kingdom of being good. <laughs> because He is good. Isn't it wonderful that God gave us this kingdom? A kingdom of righteousness. I love this verse in Philippians chapter 3. Would you mind paging there in your Bible with me? Philippians chapter 3. 
Just follow me there quickly. Philippians chapter 3, verse 7 and 9. Philippians chapter 3, 7 and 9. Just wave at me if you, if you found it. Yeah? Listen to the words of Paul to the church. But whatever were gains to me, I now consider loss for the sake of Christ. What is more, I consider everything a loss because of the surpassing worth of knowing Christ Jesus, my Lord. For whose sake I have lost all things, I consider them garbage that I may gain Christ. In verse 9, and be found in Him. Listen to these words. Not having a righteousness of my own comes from the law but that which is through faith in Christ. The righteousness that comes from God is on the basis of faith. You see, when you accepted Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior, He gave you His righteousness. And He took your sin upon Himself. And when we know Jesus, when we walk in relationship with Jesus, we get to walk out this righteousness that was given to us. And that's why the church can't look like the world. That's why we can't be the same as the world. Because we have been given the righteousness of Jesus Christ. God has given us a kingdom of righteousness. You see, righteousness is a gift. It's imputed. It's given. Nobody worked for it. It's not because you were good enough that the Lord decided, because you are so good, I'm going to give you my son's righteousness. It was a gift. By faith through grace. But you see, righteousness is also a walk. It's not just a stand, it's a walk. Every now and again I I speak to somebody who tells me that. Because of the, the grace of the Lord, I'm forgiven and I can do what I want. You see? Because God will just continue to forgive me. So God's grace is so wonderful <laughs> that I can just keep on sinning because the Lord will just keep on forgiving me. Well, I don't see that in the Bible, you see. In fact, I see the opposite. If grace doesn't lead you to righteous living, it's not grace. Titus teaches us that grace is a teacher <laughs> and it teaches us to live righteously. You see, grace enables us, it empowers us to live and to be everything that God called us to be. That's what grace is. It's not an excuse or a license to sin. It's God empowering us to be more like Jesus. Can I get an amen in the house? Yes. So grace will lead us to righteousness. It's a life of obedience. It's a response. And the Lord will help us. You see, in Psalm 23, verse 3, this is what the psalmist writes. He says, He restores my soul. 
And he leads me in paths of righteousness for his name's sake. And so we have the Holy Spirit. And he will walk with us. And we can walk righteously before him because of the work of the Holy Spirit in our hearts. Amen? He leads us in parts of righteousness for his name's sake. So God gives us a kingdom of righteousness, but he also gives us a kingdom of peace. Wonderful peace. A peace that the world cannot give us. He gives us peace that you won't find anywhere else but in Him. You see, when you've been made right with God, you have a peace that you can't explain. It's the kind of peace that money can't buy. You see, Jesus is the Prince of Peace. When I prepared my message, I felt the Lord gave me a word, and I think it's for somebody in this room. There might be somebody in this room, and you have some questions. Maybe something difficult you had to go through in 2021 or the year before. Maybe a hardship or something that was very tough. I know there are, these, there are those here who have lost loved ones and those who are here who have lost income and, and work and so forth. Or maybe you have a question. Why? Why did this happen? Where was the Lord? The peace that God gives us is not found in the answers we're looking for. It is found in the person of Jesus Christ. Because he is the Prince of Peace. You see, that's the kingdom of God. We don't know everything that he knows. We don't see everything he sees. We don't have his perspective. But he is sovereign. And he is good. And he loves you. And that's enough to have peace. And there are some answers you will never know in this life. But don't let that steal your peace. Because peace is found in the person of Jesus Christ. And so leave your questions, <laughs> leave it in 2021, and let the Lord answer you when He wants and how He wants. It doesn't matter because He is in control and He loves you. And the future is bright and hopeful. Do you know what is in the future of a Christian? A rider on a white horse. He's got fire in his eyes. A future of hope. So lean into Jesus and find peace with him. Amen? He is the Prince of Peace and the Lord gave us a kingdom of peace. Peace is knowing that God loves me, and that He is good. Peace is knowing 
that God is always with me. And I want to say this again. I, I, we can't say this enough, so hear me. <laughs> God is with you. He won't forsake you. He won't abandon you. He won't leave you. Even in your darkest hour, God is there. Even when you go through the valley of death, God is there. He's with you. Where can we go from the presence of the Lord? He's with us. God is with you. In 2022, God is with you. And that is your source of peace. We're not doing life alone. We are doing life with the Holy Spirit. Amen? And I got so much peace now, <laughs> knowing that God is with me. Amen. God gave us a kingdom of righteousness and peace and joy. God gave us a kingdom of joy. Do you know that God is joyful? He's not angry with us. He took all of his anger, all of his wrath, all of it, and he placed it on Jesus when he hung on the cross. There's no anger towards us who are in Christ Jesus. So I think that God is smiling over us. It's true. Because he visited all of his anger on his son who paid the full price. And so God is joyful. He's not angry. <laughs> In Psalm 16, if you want to write this down, Psalm 16 verse 11. Hear these wonderful words. This is from the New King James Version. I love the way that it's phrased here. It says, you will show me the path of life. Listen to this. In the presence of the Lord, in your presence is fullness of joy. And at your right hand are pleasures forevermore. I think that when we meet whether it's here in the building or at somebody's home, whether it's youth or young adults or kids' church, I think that when we meet, there should be a lot of laughter. And we, and we shouldn't excuse it or apologize for it. I think there should be a lot of laughter. I think there should be a lot of smiles in the room and a lot of joy. Because in the presence of the Lord is fullness of joy. It's okay to be joyful in His presence. He's not angry with us anymore. <clears throat> I just feel I need to say something. I feel the Lord's putting something on my heart. I feel the Lord wants to set us free from the love of money and to think that if I have enough money, I will be happy. That is the biggest lie that the devil wants to tell you. If I have enough money, I will be happy. And until that figure, whatever that figure is, because it changes. I can't be happy. I can't have joy. But I feel the Lord wants to set us free from the love of money. Because the joy that He brings has nothing to do with your bank account.
I have met people who are very rich. <laughs> They've made it in life. They are successful, and I'm putting it in inverted commas because I mean that they are very rich. And they are so unhappy. They are so unhappy and unfulfilled. They have so much money, they never have to work again. And they are so unhappy. Unfulfilled, depressed. Because there's something that God wants to give us that has nothing to do with your bank account. It's called His kingdom. It's a kingdom of joy. It's a kingdom of knowing that I've been made right with God. It's a kingdom of knowing that I can, I can have His peace. In a storm, I can be peaceful. Jesus slept in the storm. He did what? They had to wake him in a storm. <laughs> Don't you see that we're sinking? Why are you sleeping, Lord? God wants to give you that. And the Lord wants to set us free from the love of money, thinking that money will make us happy and joyful. It doesn't. Somebody said, but pastor, you say money can't buy you happiness, but money can buy you a jet ski and that will make me happy. Well, yeah, superficially. Because the minute you buy the jet ski, you have to put fuel in. And then it runs out and you have to refuel it. And then, and then somebody scratches it. And then you have to pay insurance you see, you, so your smile is disappearing and disappearing and disappearing. And three months in, where is your happiness? It's very superficial. So the novelty of buying stuff wears off quite quickly. It's not the joy that God is giving us. This joy... It's unaffected by the world. It's, it, is, it, it can't rust. It can't be stolen. It's something that God gives us internally. Joy. I, listen, I, I've met people. I went to this village once in the northern parts of Zambia. Right there on the border of the Congo and Zambia, in the Copper Bells. I, I went to a village that was so cut off from the world that they had no electricity, no cell phones, nothing. Just people living in a village, right? Um, you, you know what I remember about these people? They were the happiest people on earth. Man, I walked there in those dusty streets, chickens running everywhere, kids, a lot of kids. Man, I had like 10 kids on my one arm and 10 kids on my other arm, and they were the happiest people on the earth. No sleeping pills, no wake-up pills. I'll stop there. <laughs> Just joy. And they had nothing. They had no money. They had no real possessions. And it was something that I remembered there that the Lord spoke to my heart. He says, don't love money. Love me. Love me, says God. And you will have joy 
that the world can't understand. They don't get it, but they want it. So I pray that Cross Culture City Church will be a church, will have meetings where people will, okay, I've got to be careful now, where people will come here, new people, visitors, and I'll go like, what party is this? What are we celebrating? Why is everybody laughing? Why are there so much joy in the room? Why are there so much, why is everybody smiling? And then I'll stand on the stage and go, these people are not drunk as you suppose. <laughs> but they've been filled with the Holy Spirit. And the joy of the Lord is our strength. Amen? Amen, yes. God is giving us a kingdom of joy. This righteousness and joy and peace that the Lord gives is in the Holy Spirit. He gives us righteousness in the Holy Spirit, so we can stand and we can walk in righteousness because of the Holy Spirit. He gives us peace because the Holy Spirit is with us. And He gives us joy because the Holy Spirit is joyful. And if we serve Christ in this way, you see that last sentence? You just have that scripture back up. If we serve Christ in this way, verse 18, we serve Christ in this way, in what way? If we demonstrate righteousness, if we demonstrate peace, if we demonstrate joy, if we serve Christ in this way, righteousness, joy, and peace, we demonstrate God's kingdom. See, this kingdom is invisible. But is it? <laughs> if you look at the person next to you, they're part of that kingdom. So we make the invisible kingdom visible by demonstrating righteousness, peace, and joy in the Holy Spirit. So the invisible God becomes visible through us, His church, His body on the earth. So turn that frown upside down because Jesus is on the throne. I want to conclude my message today by just telling a short story. And I also feel that this is a prophetic word for us as a church, a word from the Lord for 2022. <clears throat> On um, Old Year's Eve, uh, 31st of January, we were in Jeffreys Bay. Somebody needs to suffer for Jesus, right? <laughs> so we were in Jeffreys Bay, and we decided to go down to the beachfront, to the main beach, in Dolphin Beach, to go and watch the, the fireworks. And uh, what, a, what a display. I mean, it's, it's something, right? If, I don't know if you've ever seen it. But there's a couple of thousand people on the beach, and they got these massive, like a firework display. Um, in fact, we were a little bit too close to the fireworks, I think, for my comfort. But it was something to behold. And so we were there, and um, we went down as a whole family, the kids, and then we all, all went down. And, um, but um, Beulah and Ivan had fallen asleep um, I don't know, around 10 o'clock or so, we, we decided to wake them up and take them with to see the fireworks. 
And um, so I'm holding on to Beulah. She's on my arm. She's kind of a little bit asleep, but a little bit awake as well. And so this fireworks, right? And everybody's uh, screaming, Happy New Year, Happy New Year. And we say to each other, Happy New Year, and it's hugs and kisses. And so Beulah looks at me and she says, Why is everybody saying Happy New Year? What does that mean? So I'm trying to explain <laughs> to, to a six-year-old in the midst of fireworks what Happy New Year means. I, I can't get it right. Uh, I don't know how to tell her what it means. And she doesn't even know what a week is, you know. So how do you say this is Happy New Year? But as I'm trying to explain something to her, the Lord speaks to me. And this is what the Lord says. He said, why are you saying Happy New Year? Spirit of God saying this to me. Why are you saying Happy New Year? Why don't you say Holy New Year? You see, because true happiness is a fruit of holiness. You see, when you are consecrated and set apart for God, when you allow the Holy Spirit to make you holy, like He is holy, you will find the joy of the Lord. And so the Holy Spirit said, why don't you say Holy New Year? Not Happy New Year. Holy New Year. May this year be a year where you are completely and utterly surrendered to Jesus and live in holiness, set apart for Him. And from this holiness, you'll find the joy that He brings. So I want to say to you, Holy New Year. May 2022 be a year of surrender. And let's see what He will do as we work with Him. Amen. Thank you very much. God bless you. Good morning, church. Can we appreciate Pastor Kobus for that wonderful message this morning? I want to greet you all this morning in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Welcome to our first service for 2022. And as Pastor Kobus has said, I'd like to wish you all a holy new year. Um, before we go on to the announcement, I'd like to ask the ushers to start going around with the offering baskets. So if you can prepare whatever it is that you have for today, and uh, we will pray for it at the end. And while the ushers are going around, I'll just make a few announcements. So firstly, I'd like to welcome all the new visitors. Do we have anyone visiting us for the first time this morning? If you can raise up your hand, we just appreciate you. So I'd like to invite all our new visitors to join us in our visitor's coffee corner, which is on your, uh, uh, on your left for a cup of coffee, where you'll also meet with the, the leaders there. And then uh, the second announcement, if anyone needs prayer, there will be someone here right in the front at the service after the service um, to, to pray with you. So don't underestimate the power of agreement. So there will be somebody who will be agreeing with you in prayer after the service. So please do come to the front if you need any prayer. And then if you'd like to find out more about our church and what we stand for, please join the encounter course that also happens in the coffee lounge after the service. And if we, we do need volunteers, volunteers are needed to assist in various areas and aspects of this ministry. So please speak to Debbie uh, if you're interested. She was the one who met with you and um, at the registration desk uh, earlier when you came through. And um, some of the other announcements is the youth. We are resuming youth this coming Friday, 
6.30 to 9 p.m., so I'm sure the youth are very excited about that. And Kids Church will be resuming next week Sunday, um, just um, from 9.30. So with that, um, have we collected the offering? We're still collecting. I think we have almost done with the collection, so let's pray, bow our heads and pray for that. Heavenly Father, we bless your name and we glorify you. We thank you that we are able to give back to you because you give us so much. We pray your blessing over everything that was given today, that you will multiply it, O oh Lord, and that it will go to do the works that you wanted to do. We pray for those who are not able to give today, that you will bless them so that they may be able to give back uh, in future. In Jesus' name we pray and we thank you. Amen. Amen. And with that, I'd like to close off the service uh, just to also encourage all of us to take seriously the message that we received today. The kingdom of God is righteousness, peace, and joy. I want to encourage all of you to walk in that righteousness, the peace, and the joy that the Lord Jesus has given us. Amen. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, we thank you that we were able to gather here this morning. We thank you for the word that we received. We thank you, O oh Lord, that we've been encouraged. And we pray that as we go out into the world this week, that we will demonstrate your righteousness. We will de demonstrate your peace. We will demonstrate your love and joy in every environment where we have placed us. That we will show off the kingdom of God in this place, uh, here on earth. We thank you, Lord, and we honor you until we meet again. We thank you and we bless you in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. God bless you all. Walk